Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to control a DC motor with ESP32. We will have two projects. First, we are going to control the motor and direction of rotation without speed. And in the second project, we are going to control the speed of motor, increasing it from very low speed to very high, to the maximum. And when it reaches to the maximum, then we are controlling it and going backwards. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network and also it comes with micro SD card where where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. understand how to turn on and off the motor and also control the speed of the motor we have to understand that this cannot be connected connected directly to ESP32 or any other microcontroller like Arduino or, or STM32 or any other microcontroller for that we need a special circuitry but before that let's see how we can control a motor now we have a battery and we have a motor one terminal of the battery is connected to one terminal of the motor and the other wire is connected to the other terminal and as a result this motor will rotate. And if we disconnect this wire here at this point, this is a switch. So we can connect it and the motor will rotate and disconnect it and the motor will turn off. This switch also can be moved to the other line, other wire. The same way we can disconnect it, the motor will turn off and connect it and the motor will turn on. Now, if we pay attention here, if for example in this particular motor, if the positive terminal is connected to one of the wire that is labeled as positive or negative, doesn't matter, for example in this wire, and the other side is connected to the, this particular motor is uh, uh, rotating in counterclockwise direction, in this way. Now if we switch the wire, this positive which was in here, if we move it to this location and the negative which was here move it there, then the positive is coming here, the, the other side is connected to the negative and as a result the motor will rotate in clockwise direction. Before it was rotating in counterclockwise, now it is in clockwise direction. So we learned that if we change the polarity of the power supply to the motor, the motor direction of rotation in DC motor will change. If we put some kind of mechanical switch that can do this all at once, so we can have can this motor controlled in uh, both direction. Now let's see what happens from positive. We have this gray shows one switch which has three terminals and the other gray is also another switch which has three terminals. These two switches are connected together so uh, you can move them uh, together. When you push it both of these contacts will move. So the positive is now connected via this switch and in here it's connected to the negative and the positive of the motor is connected via this contact and it goes to the negative and as a result the motor is for example uh, rotating in counterclockwise direction. Now if we move this up, now let's see, this was like this, now it's moving, moving it up. The positive before it, which was going to the negative terminal, now 
this negative is not connected from here it gets connected to the positive and the negative of the motor which before was to the positive now it is connected to this terminal and it is connected to the negative and as a result the motor is rotating in clockwise direction before it was counterclockwise now clockwise so the other principle that we just learned is if we have some kind of switch that can connect or change the polarity for us we, we can control the direction of rotation of the motor now to control the dc motor with arduino board with esp32 any other board you cannot connect it directly like that because this motor needs a lot of current and a microcontroller cannot supply that amount of current so we need something between the microcontroller we need something between the microcontroller or ESP32 and the motor which is called driver and because this is an inductive load there is a lot of winding usually for protection we put a diode this diode is just for illustration most drivers that we use will have their own diode built in We need this L293D motor driver. L293D, the D means diode, it has a diode, it has four drivers and each driver has two pins, we, one A for example and then enable pin and then it has output, two input and one output. To here, we, when we use L293D, it has, because I just mentioned it has four drivers, one half bridge, if we use one half of the driver, the motor can be rotated only in one direction and it has uh, one input pin and enable pin. So you enable it and then from here you can send, for example, password modulation signal and the motor will rotate in one direction and the other wire is connected to the ground. And if we use two half bridge, then it will become a full bridge. Uh, the other side which was connected to the ground is now connected to the same uh, another driver to another driver and then the positive will come and the negative will go to other driver and both of these are connected to the same enable so we enable them together and as a result this motor will rotate for example in counterclockwise direction pay attention that the lower driver is high and the upper is low now if we set the lower to low and the upper high because it was low now it's high then the enable is high then the current will change the direction and the motor which before was running in counterclockwise direction now it will run in clockwise direction and here is a data sheet for l293 and there is x so it's d we are using d version and it has quadruple half h driver what is the meaning of half h each of this is half a bridge driver. Two of this together, two half will become one bridge and two of this will become another bridge. So we have two bridge uh, in one package. However, just remember that operating voltage is 4.5 to 36 volts and the current per channel is 600 milliampere. It means that from this driver, 600 milliampere will pass either this way or that way. So this is half bridge, another half bridge, so they become full bridge, so we can control one motor. But if you connect one motor to one half bridge, it will be controlled only in one direction, not both. In this case, it shows three motor, but only one is controlled fully, clockwise and counterclockwise, but these two are just rotating in one direction. So with L1, L293D, we can control only two motors fully because these two will become one full bridge another full bridge and here is the documentation page once you come to our ESP32 and then Arduino user click on 4.1 motor this is our lesson we are going to control DC motor using L293D which I'm going to explain it to you and then the second project we will also control the speed we need, we need our ESP32 board we need expansion camera expansion module we need a breadboard we need jumper wires we need our DC motor and L293D which is all included in our package and 
the pens that we can use are these pens and here is the schematic we use the chip L293D and the pens have been mentioned here we have one motor connected to pen 3 and pen 6 which I'm going to show you through the wiring no resistor nothing and two pin will be connected to the to controller or ESP32 here is the wiring which I'm going to show you step by step and here is the code which I'm going to explain it in the code explanation section and this is the second code where we can control the speed of motor if you remember from lesson 2.2 when we talked about fading LED we used pulse width modulation and in our code also we defined the brightness and the, the frequency we defined the frequency the bit rate and the brightness of a LED the same principle is applied here so we can control the speed of motor we need this L293D motor driver we need to use our DC motor breadboard and few wires with our ESP32 module and the camera extension board let's first insert the chip this motor driver has a dot here and from this we will identify the pin 1 and the pins start from here 1 to 8 and then 9 to 16 so we will insert it hold your breadboard such that red is in inside or red is at the top I'm following the diagram here and just insert it if you cannot insert it make sure to push the top pins with your finger until they fit and now let's get one pin uh, red from pin 16 to ground to positive so from here pin 16 to positive this red is all our positive get another red from pin 1 to positive pin 1 positive and then another pin from pin 8 to positive this short wire that you see that doesn't matter this is the same line I can connect it here and to positive the same and if I connect it in here it will be the same so all of these are the same now we connect one orange wire as you can see here uh, from pin 7 this is pin 7 you can see it in the diagram pin 7 goes to 14 so one two uh, so this is the last one that is seven seven goes to 14 our usb is the other side so it goes to 14 i've connected to 14 and pin two goes to 13 here pin two using blue wire connecting it to 14 so pin two and pin two pin two goes to 13 13 is the third pin from this side and then black pin 4 goes to the ground pin 4 that is pin 4 ground is the second pin and now let's get a positive from any, anywhere on this red line including in here get it and connect it to pin 5 volts this portion is done now uh, let's connect our motor the motor doesn't matter the polarity because if you connect it in reverse the direction will change so we are connecting one to and here one wire to pin three the other to pin six here pin three is empty i'm connecting it to pin three and then the other wire to pin six So two pin are in between. The wiring is now completed with ESP32. Now let's open our program, click on file, open, and then on the left side click on download, 
this is how I have shown you at the beginning of the course. So we have set it up the same way. Click on ESP32, Starter Kit Main, double click, and then double click on this folder C, double click on Codes, and then scroll down until you see 4.1 Motor folder, double click to open it, and select 4.1 Motor file with a green icon, click and open it. Our program is opened. First, we define pin 13 and 14 for motor. This is motor 1A and then motor 2A. So this is not a good naming. This should have been motor A1, motor A2. But anyway, so they use the word define, which means they are constant and they cannot change. Inside the setup, we use those, those two pins and define them as output using pen mode. So this line says that set this motor A pin, which we defined it at pin 13 as output, and this line also says set motor 2A, which is pin 14, as output. And this code will run only once because it's located inside the setup. And then we come to the loop uh, function, and this function runs up to here. And we are doing multiple action here to control a motor, just need, we just need two lines. So this line, we set the motor pin A as high and pin 2 low. So this way the motor can uh, run in one direction with 2000 milliseconds. And this line, we see the motor 1A which was high, now we set it to low. This and then motor 2 which was low, now it's high. As a result, the motor will rotate in the other direction. And this one also will give it two seconds to go in that direction. And we go back here, and then motor A is low, and motor uh, 1A and 2A is low. When both of these are low, the motor will uh, stop. And this is three seconds, and the loop reaches to the end, and it goes back and repeats action, these actions all over again. Now let's see how we can select the ESP32 board. We can click here under the select board and type here ESP32 DEV. As soon as you type dev, you will see dev board. You can select it and click OK. So the board have been selected. Now we have to select the port. The, the other way to select the board is click on tools, board, ESP32 and select the ESP32 dev module. Now we have to select the port. If I click here, it shows two ports, and I don't know which one belongs to my device. Sometimes you will see, you will not see the number properly. So the best way to be sure, the right click on the Start menu, go to the Device Manager, and you will see here the ports. If I click on this arrow, it will show me the ports. One is USB Serial CH340, one the other is USB Serial Device. And here, now it's connected. If I disconnect this, one of them disappear. The one that disappeared is my board. So six stays and it disappeared. If I connect it, so it is my COM port, CH340. Now it is my COM port and I can select it. Or I can click on tool, port, and here you will see it. You can select whichever you want. Ours is COM8. Now we have successfully selected the board and the port. And this is very important. It must be done first. Now, because this motor needs a lot of current, uh, Arduino USB cannot supply that current uh, via your computer. So what we do is we disconnect our one of the wire, perhaps maybe the, the 5 volts, just disconnect it and then we will connect the wire and then we can upload our code 100% and now it's done disconnect it from the power and then connect your 5 volts now I put also some tape here, paper tape, so we can see it rotating. This switch is now off. Connect 
your battery and power it up so perfectly running changing the direction and stopping When you turn it off from here, the motor will stop. Now I'm disconnecting the power. So the motor is now from one direction to the other direction. It just goes very quick and it should not be a better practice. When the motor runs in one, from one direction to the other one, it should be stopped. And for that, let's put this, these two lines which are for a stop. I'm copying them and placing them here. And with a delay, let's say one second. And then after this, when it changes direction, it goes off. So that's fine. Now let's upload the code. I'm connecting back my board. The power is not connected. So the code is being compiled and done, uploaded. Now it's ready, disconnecting this USB, connecting the 5 volts and then turning it on. Now it rotates, stops for one second and then changes the direction. Now this is better. This is our second project, click on file, open, and on the same location, we have 4.1, it says PWM, pulse width modulation, double click, and then select 4.1 motor PMW, and open it. Now this code is a little different because pulse width modulation or PWM is involved. This portion is the same. Here we are defining the frequency for pulse width modulation, which is 500 hertz. And then we are setting the resolution, 8 bits. And then we are defining channel for that purpose, channel 0, we, we call it channel A. And for channel 1, we call it channel B. And all of these are uh, integer of constant, which means they cannot change once the program started. Inside the setup, we write the setup which runs only once. First, we are uh, initializing the channel, channel uh, A, using LEDC, using LEDC setup with a frequency and resolution, and then channel B as well. So these two are defining those two channels, and then we are attaching them. We are attaching it using this function, which we have explained it in a previous lesson when we controlled an LED fade. LEDC attach pin, we are attaching pin uh, 13 here, 13 and 14. So attaching pin 13 to channel A, which we defined it here. And then we are attaching uh, pin 14 or pin 2A to channel B, which we have defined it here. And then we are initializing the serial monitor with 115,200. Then we are coming inside the loop. Inside the loop, we have uh, two loops, one for loop and then delay and then another for loop and then delay or wait time and then the loop ends and the uh, main loop will come and repeat all those tasks. Now let's see what is that. This one initially uh, is an integer. We are defining a duty cycle zero and we are comparing it if it is less than 255 or equal. Then we print this on the screen and then we set channel A with a duty cycle, so this sends either 0, 1, 2, 3 because it's incrementing here. We have already spoken about the for loop. I'm not repeating it here. So this value uh, is printed on the screen. First it might be 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 255. 
and then we are sending channel A with that and then channel B with zero. So this way the motor will slowly increase from zero to 255 and every step we have 50 millisecond delay. Once we reach up to 255 which is maximum then the motor stays on with that speed for two seconds or 2000 millisecond. Then here we are defining the this duty cycle variable as 255 this time we say if it is greater or equal than zero and we are decrementing it you see here minus minus and here this was plus plus this time it goes from 255 to 254 53 51 and up to zero and every time it does the same thing printing it and sending that channel a uh, uh, with the, in the same direction with uh, channel B to uh, with a 0, 50 millisecond and then we have 200, uh, 2000 millisecond or 2 second delay and it will repeat it. This was the full explanation. Let me upload the code. Make sure that 5 volts of the motor is disconnected and then I'm connecting it and click on upload to upload the code. Completed. And I'm opening the serial monitor. The program is running and you see we are reading this value because we have defined the serial monitor with 115,200 and the value here is 9,600. Let's change it so it matches that value here. And then we see the value. This is the value of uh, password modulation. I'm increasing the size so you can see it. And it waits for two seconds. Waits for two seconds. And it goes down. Now I'm turning this on. I'm connecting the five volts. You see, with the lower value, the motor is going very slow. And as it reaches 255, now it's at the maximum and slowing down. This lower value cannot control this. Then it goes back. You see, 30, 40, 50, now around 60 it starts rotating and that value depends on the characteristics of the motor. Now to control the motor uh, with your application you do need this for loop. This is just for demonstration purpose unless you have some kind of fancy project that needs it. But usually, let me save this so I'm not going to change the original one. And let's name it as uh, lesson. So I'm going to remove the bottom for loop and here I don't need even the serial monitor. So we need these two lines. Now you can put your duty cycle between 0 to 255. Let's say you want it at 180. And that's it. This line will be 0, so the other will be. Now if I upload the code, the motor will rotate in one direction. Code is uploaded. And let me connect the 5 volts. turn this on and connect it. I'm disconnecting it from USB. I'm connecting the 5 volts. So now it's just at a constant speed running in that direction. Let me s stop it so, so you can see which way it's rotating. So it's, count, uh, it's clockwise. Now, to change the direction of rotation, make this 
zero and make this, for example, whatever value you want. And let's say 100 and then let's upload the code. Uh, code is completed. Let me disconnect and let me connect the 5 volts back and show you. So it goes now in the other direction, counterclockwise. Disconnect and I'm connecting it slowly so you can see it. You see? So now it's counterclockwise. So this way, whichever pen you just change the value, one side must be zero, the other side should be the value, and the motor, uh, the direction of rotation will change.